Hi, that's me, Maxine, hiding behind some bushes and spying on a girl. Don't get me wrong, I don't have a crush on her, nor am I a total psychopath. I'm just doing a favor for my mate Damon. But if I'd known how crazy this was all going to get, I'd never have agreed to help him. It all started when Damon fell in love with this girl, Sophie. She had this mysterious charm that made him want to talk to her right away. And he did. She didn't even glance at him. She just walked away. Ouch. I didn't like her one bit. She was so stuck up. But Damon didn't give up that easily. He tried all kinds of tricks to get her attention, even waiting for the bus with her, even though he had a car. Nothing worked, though, and this made him miserable. He begged for my help, but I said, No way! Then he said, Aw, oh, come on, Maxine, you're a girl, so just befriend her or something. Maybe you can find out what she likes, her fave foods, music, etc. Then I can try to impress her. Please, I'm begging you. I'll even lend you my Nintendo Switch for a month if you agree. You can't say no to that. He had me at that. I'd do anything to get a Nintendo Switch. Fine, it's a deal, but don't blame me if it doesn't work. So after class that day, I searched for Sophie. She was at the bus stop, and I was about to approach her when suddenly she walked away. I decided to follow her, and on the way, she stopped to help an old lady cross the road. Wow, I was surprised. For someone with such a cold face, she had a pretty warm heart. Hmm, maybe she wasn't so bad after all. After that, she started walking towards the park, and by then it was starting to get dark. What was she doing? She sat down on a bench in a creepy part of the park, almost like she was waiting for someone. I hid behind a bush so she wouldn't see me, but I was totally freaked out. Suddenly, two guys appeared and started talking to her but they didn't seem like her acquaintances. Oh my gosh, she looked panicked. I had to help. I quickly shouted, Help! Officer! Please help! There are two guys bothering us! Obviously there was no officer, but it worked. The two guys ran off, and I rushed over to make sure Sophie was okay. She was surprised to see me, but then she hugged me and thanked me for saving her. Her whole body was shaking. She must have been terrified. I walked with her back to our dorm, and she told me how she liked to come to the park at night because it was so peaceful. I told her it was clearly dangerous and that she probably shouldn't go alone anymore. Then we exchanged numbers, and after that we became quite close. Close enough. That was a few days later I told her Damon had a big crush on her, and asked if she'd maybe go on a date with him, but she just shook her head and said she wasn't ready. Her eyes looked sad, so I didn't push it any further, Maybe she'd just gone through a bad breakup? I didn't ask her again, but one night I was heading to her dorm for a movie night when I heard two people fighting. It was Sophie and some guy, and she was crying. It looked like the guy was about to hit her, so I ran over and said, Hey, what the heck do you think you're doing? Leave her alone or I'll call the cops. He just laughed at me and said to Sophie, We're not done yet. Then he stormed off. I asked Sophie if she was okay and who that guy was. Then she told me how he was her ex, and that he kept trying to get back together with her, but she wasn't interested. As she told me this, she started to cry and said, Because of him, I have become so scared and anxious. I'm even too scared to sleep at night. I felt so sorry for her, and told her I was here for her, and that she could call me any time. Well, Maybe I shouldn't have said that, because that's exactly what she started doing. Every night she'd call me, and we'd end up chatting until 3 a.m. I was so exhausted, but I wanted to help her. She seemed so anxious all the time. Damon knew we chatted a lot, but he'd stopped asking about Sophie. It seems he'd lost interest and was more worried about me looking like a zombie from The Walking Dead. You seriously need some sleep, Maxine. Leave Sophie be. She's clearly got issues. It's probably best to not get too involved. Easier said than done, though. But that night, I decided not to answer her call. I went to bed early, and when I woke up the next morning, I had about 20 missed calls and 50 texts from her. Oh my gosh! Some of them said she was so lonely and that I'd abandoned her. Then one said, if you don't pick up, then I will end it all. Okay, this was crazy. I immediately called her, but she wouldn't pick up. 
I rushed to her dorm, but nobody answered. I was panicking by then and bashing on the door, screaming, Sophie, open this darn door. But there was still no answer. I was terrified she'd done something bad, so I asked some students to help me bash down the door, and that's when she opened the door. I've never been so happy to see someone alive. I ran over to hug her, but she looked so annoyed. What are you doing here? You're making a scene, she said. What? I was so worried about you. You said you were going to... But she interrupted me and said, You need to get some sleep, Maxine. You seem insane. I couldn't believe it. After all those calls and texts, she was the insane one, not me. I didn't feel like yelling back, so I just left her. I needed some space. She tried to apologize to me over the next few days, but I didn't want to be around her. She even texted me saying if I wouldn't be her friend anymore, then life wasn't worth living. I was so tired of her threats, so I just ignored them. And then things got worse. A few days later, Damon and I were studying together when Sophie called me and said she was in the hospital. She told me that she had a brain tumor and they'd just done a biopsy to see if it was malignant or benign. I couldn't believe it. She asked me if I could pick her up and I said, of course, this was so scary. I told Damon and he just said, I think she's making it up, Maxine. How could she suddenly have a tumor? You guys just had a fight and suddenly she's in the hospital? Come on, think about it. I was shocked. Damon, how could you? You're such a jerk. Then I ran off and arrived at the hospital to find Sophie sitting outside wearing a hospital cap. She said her hair had been shaved off for the biopsy, and I asked to see the scar, but she wouldn't show me. She said she'd get a headache if she took it off. I was just glad that she was okay and gave her a ride home. We made up, and I decided to look after her for the day. She seemed so weak, I couldn't bear to see her suffering. I called Damon to tell him that he owed me an apology and told him about Sophie. And he just said, Oh, wow, okay, sorry, hope she's okay then. But then a few days later, he called me and said, Listen, Maxine, Sophie's a liar. She didn't have a biopsy. I bumped into her earlier and her cap fell off, and she has a full head of hair under there. No way it would grow back that fast. Why would she lie to me? I didn't get it. I needed to know the truth, so after class, I went to her dorm. She opened the door right away, and sure enough, she had all her hair intact. She probably knew Damon had told me, and so hadn't even bothered to keep up the lie. This made me furious. Straight away, I started shouting at her. Honestly, Sophie, what is wrong with you? Why would you pretend to be sick like that? Friends don't do that. Sophie grabbed my hand and said, Maxine, I'm sorry. I was desperate. I only did it because I missed you and wanted you to care about me again. I took it too far, though. Please forgive me. Are you crazy? I screamed. I was worried sick about you. Are you sure there's not something wrong with you? Sophie started grinning in a weird way and said, The only thing wrong with me is that I'm in love with you, Maxine. She wouldn't let go of my hand, and I just stared in shock. Wh what, what did you say? You heard me. I love you. Then she started to manically laugh and said, I've loved you since the day we first met. I knew you were following me, so I pretended to be in danger so you'd come rescue me. Even my ex-boyfriend was fake. He was just one of my friends pretending. Can't you see? I'm willing to do just about anything to get your attention. If that's not love, then what is? This couldn't be happening. I tried to stay as calm as possible and said, Listen, Sophie, I'm flattered. Really, I am. But I'm straight. I see you as just a friend, okay? But Sophie wouldn't give up. She grabbed my hands again and said, How do you know that? You didn't even try to love me yet. Just give me a chance and I'll show you what true love looks like. I tried to let go of her hands, but it was impossible. Sophie grabbed my hands tighter and tighter that it even began to hurt. She looked me in the eyes and, oh my god, it's like I couldn't recognize her anymore. She looked like a crazy person, like a psychopath. Then she began to speak in a really creepy tone. You can't get away from me. You're mine now. I was so scared. 
I needed to get out of here, so I pushed her really hard that she fell on the ground and I ran like a mad woman out of there until I was back in my dorm. Then I called the police, but by the time they reached her dorm, she was gone. I told them what happened and showed them a photo of her, and you won't believe it. Apparently, I wasn't the only girl Sophie had attacked. There were other girls, too. After that night, I was terrified. Everywhere I went, it felt like someone was watching me. Then one evening, after my shift at work, I was walking through the park back to my dorm when I heard someone up ahead. I knew right away it was Sophie, but she wasn't alone. She was with some guys. They spotted me and started heading towards me, but I ran as fast as I could, and luckily the police were just outside the park and went in and arrested them. Sounds like a coincidence, right? Well, it wasn't. Sophie's not the only one who can fool people. I knew Sophie was stalking me, so I told the police, and together we created this plan to catch her, and voila, it worked. Sophie, if you're watching this, I wish you all the best, but let's not meet ever again. That's enough stalking for one lifetime.